How's it going everybody? Kiyakai Matsumoto here. I'm back again, once again, doing another Saber Forge review again. <laughs> and this is a very special review for me because this is the first ever Saber Forge ASP hilt that I've ever gotten from them. Now, just as a little bit of a warning, um, I'm going to be, the review itself on the hilt is going to be rather on the long side, mainly because it's an ASP. I have to go through the individual parts, their dimensions, you know, etc. So it's going to take longer than the hilt that's already been built by, um, by Saber Forge. There is going to be a little bit of a uh, prologue in the beginning as per usual on my reviews. So if you're not a big fan of the prologue and just want to get onto the review itself, I provide a time link in the description. So if you are one of those people, you might want to hit those right now. But anyways, just so, uh, I, it's been about five, almost five months since I last did a review. And uh, for all those who are a big fan of the series or even just somewhat fans in general or you know, just like to watch these videos, I feel like I should give everybody an, uh, an update as to what's been going on. I haven't been able to do a review since uh, January and that's because of a bunch of things coming up. School was taking, occupying and then I was training for swimming and uh, it's just been one thing after the other and I just have not been able to keep up with it. And unfortunately, there was a tragedy that struck in my family on top of everything else. My, this video is being recorded on June 5th, 2017. And the, for those who are wondering what the tragedy is, my dad passed away on April 13th, 2017. He was 66 years old and he died from a construction accident, so I've kind of been out of it because of that too. To add insult to injury, he died exactly one week before I turned 25. Yeah, what a present that was. But I don't usually like to bring stuff up like that, but just kind of giving everybody a heads up as to where I'm at, you know, and how everything's been going. I now, being the oldest son that is still living on Maui, I now have to step up and take care of my mother and sister. So, and because of that, I'm having to give a few things up. Like competitive swimming, I've been doing it for literally half my life, that's 12 and a half years, but I had to say goodbye to it because it's just taking up too much time and I can't commit to it like I used to be able to because I'm going working full time and going to school at the same time. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it just not working for me. I'm hoping to take up Kendall, which will definitely help me with the uh, with sparring with my friends, but and it's definitely less time consuming, but I hope I hope in the future that to get back to swimming. The other thing that I'm gonna have to give up, at least for the time being, are these reviews. This is going to be the uh, season finale of my Saber Forge Hilt reviews. And it's because money is gonna be getting extremely tight for the next several months. Um, it's not something I am wanting to do, but you know, I enjoy doing stuff like this, but my priority is taking care of my family. So uh, you know, I hope to be able to do one more you know, for in, the fu in the near future for this season, but if, if I am able to do those, do that one more at all, that's going to be considered the bonus episode of the season. Kind of like when you buy like a season pass of a TV show on iTunes or get the Blu-ray or whatever, and they have, sometimes they will throw little bonus episodes in there or deleted scenes or whatnot. So it's like, here's a treat for you guys. That's what that'll be if I end up doing that at all. So like I said though, my family comes first and so does school. That's what my father would want me to do and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So if there's one piece of advice that I can give everybody watching, uh, it's never take your family for granted. You know, always, whatever arguments, quarrels, you have with them, whatever beef that you have going on, squash it. It's not worth it. Be there for your family, take care of them as much as you can, even though they can be an encumbrance to you at times and an irritation because the simple fact of the matter is, those are the people who are going to be there for you when literally no everyone else turns their back on you. And I li have literally had that happen to me before and it sucks. It's not fun, but I'm just fortunate that I had my family who had my back. Even though we didn't always see eye to eye, they're still family. So, anyway, uh, but so that's 
that's just giving an idea, just giving everybody a heads up as to what's been going on with me. Now, before I get into the review, for question of the video number one, uh, if I am somehow able to return to doing these hilt reviews uh, in the future, which hilts or would you like to see me review? Uh, me personally, I want to review the Ronin. I've had my eye on that thing for a long time. Sadly, I'm not going to be able to uh, invest in that yet, but we'll see how things go. The second one I want to do after that one is the Templar. And after those two, fair game for anything else. And the question of the video number two, if I'm not able to do the hilts at all, there is a possible alternative. What I can do is I can get the LED modules, the 12 plus LED modules from their, their Etsy page or their main site, and I can uh, go through the different colors, like the different groupings, like the shades of red, shades of blue, shades of green, yellow, etc. And I'll do a description because it, it looks different on camera than it does in person. So I'll do a video where I describe each of those colors in person, what they look like, and then I'll do them in the dark as well. So that way they can see what it looks like in person and what it'll look like on camera at the same time. Kill two birds with one stone kind of thing. The other thing I can do, you know, in regards to that is, Saber Forge sells the 12 watt plus LED stars, the copper stars with the four diodes mounted on that. And you can customize the, uh, those options. You can write in the order comments what LEDs you, can, you want on there. You can't customize the module, sadly, but you can customize that star. So if I'm unable to do hilt reviews and I can do the LED module things, which custom color combinations would you like me to showcase? Again, as with the um, hilts, that's as an, on an if and only if basis, so if I'm able to do either one of those two, I'll shoot everybody an update and then I'll be taking commissions from there. Okay, so question of the video, number three. What are the fav your favorite movies that you have seen this year so far? And, uh, well, well, not Anne, sorry. Um, for me personally, this is the movies that you've seen in theaters so far. I haven't seen very many recently. I'm wanting to see Wonder Woman. For I've heard it's extremely good, and I'm not, personally I'm not a fan of the character, but I've heard it's done very well. It's currently the highest rated DCEU film to date, and that's better than that's better than Man of Steel even. And Man of Steel is my favorite film of that one, so I. I actually want to go see that one. <laughs> okay, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, that one is another favorite of mine. Although I did like the first one a little bit better than the second one, for a number of reasons. For one thing, the second one felt like it didn't have a plot at times, and it had a tendency to jump around every now and then. The other thing, even though I'm a huge comedy fan, and this one felt like more of a comedy than the last one, it had me slapping my knee almost every ten minutes. But it did feel oversaturated with the comedy at times. And some of the jokes that they put in there, like for example, when some, some of the things that came out of Drax's mouth, I'm like, okay, they went there. Especially considering that, th that it's owned by Disney to boot. Like, it, it was a shocker that they actually used that kind of joke. But, and the other thing, the change to Star-Lord's parentage, that was a bit bizarre for me. And honestly, that opened up a whole nother slew of questions that are still unanswered. But all in all, it was a great film. I, sorry, don't mean to do this, especially if you're watching that in India. That's but no, I mean I'm not kidding. If you do this in India, it's like sticking somebody the middle finger, from what I've been heard. So sorry. Um, I, yeah, but all in all, it was an enjoyable film. I gave it an eight out of ten. But so far, the film that I love the most this year has been Logan. That movie was almost, if not, if not a masterpiece. It was just a really good film. I mean, I'm willing to. Hugh Jackman is my favorite actor, but I'm willing to give him his licks. I mean, Origins Wolverine sucked on a number of levels, but I did enjoy it much better than the last X-Men: The Last Stand for a number of reasons. For one thing. It was, I, you get to see how the adamantium got bonded to his bones, which is always neat. I do enjoy a good origin story. The CGI and his claws look pretty cheesy, but I did enjoy that sequence. The other thing I noticed is, I think that was, the, no, don't quote me on this, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that was the first time he started growing his uh, facial hair out and the hair on his head out naturally. He wasn't wearing a wig or extensions or anything this time, so it had much more of a natural look to him. It didn't look crazy or wilded out. So of the 
the the Brian Singer era, you know, where his claws had their original look, where it was flat on the top and had that angle point on the bottom and the front. Uh, Origins Wolverine so far is my favorite of his looks. Of the Mangold era, where the, his claws had the new streamlined look, where they're pointed on the top and flat at the front, the Wolverine is my personal favorite look, followed by Days of Future Past, uh, and then Logan after that. So the other thing that I liked about um, Logan or the Origins Wolverine, sorry. Uh, Origins Wolverine, they, it was the first time they really got his Berserker Rage right. In X2 X-Men United, he did get nuts and stick his claws into people, but he, he, you kind of saw it on his face that he was controlling himself. In Origins, on the other hand, when he lost it, he was fuming mad, and it was written all over his face. So that was one thing that I really enjoyed about that film. They, you would not see that Berserker mode again until Apocalypse, his cameo in X-Men Apocalypse. Um, I'm pretty sure that everybody can agree that we all hated that in, that pathetic imitation of Deadpool. Um, but all in all, you know, Origins wasn't that, that great. It had some pretty, but it had some pretty good action sequences. They got a bunch of things on point, and you know, it, it still, for, to me personally, was better than The Last Stand. Uh, the Wolverine, on the other hand, was much a much better improvement as far as you know in general, but they didn't introduce get the Berserker Rage down right again. Uh, he just was broody a lot of the time, and um, it didn't leave you wanting more overall, especially the theatrical version. There were so many scenes in the trailer that got left out of the finished cut of the film, even in the unrated version where it was extended. It, you didn't see a lot of those scenes. I was expecting Logan to go full on fighting ninja, and you know where the two one had where two ninja had him had each hand in a chain like this, and but they didn't showcase that. It was just a little bit of him fighting, and the theatrical version was even worse, where he just ran away. So uh, it just it just didn't leave you wanting more. But this with Logan. Hugh Jackman and James Mangold, they seem to have learned from their previous mistakes, and they kicked it off with a huge bang. That is easily, easily Hugh Jackman's best film in years, and that was, it was just a great and excellent film. The, the comedy, the action, um, the, the sentimental moments, and even the heart-wrenching scenes were, sorry, were done ex very exceptionally well. Hugh Jackman's performance as, you know, the old cranky and sick Logan was <laughs> very well done. They get they brought the Berserker Rage back again and right at the beginning of the movie to boot. So spoiler alert, but <laughs> and uh, Patrick Stewart's performance as an old cranky and senile Professor X was equally satisfying. If there was one person in that entire film who could steal the spotlight from those two is newcomer Daphne Keene. She did a, a fantastic job as Laura slash X-23, and she just has that icy glare at people that just can send shivers down your spine. Um, the villains were kind of forgettable a little bit, but I think I had a feeling that they were doing that deliberately to set up the, um, the true villain of that film. Spoiler alert, again, X-24. That was an original creation that James Mangold made, and I didn't see it coming. I did not see that coming. Nobody did. So uh, it just was a very well done film, and it was an excellent send off for Hugh Jackman Pat, and Patrick Stewart. It was one of the best movies I had seen in a long time. So I gave that one a 10 out of 10. But, anyways, that's enough for the prologue. Now, on to the main review the real reason why everybody is here. Now, I cannot be more, I'm, I'm very excited for this thing because I have been waiting for this for the better part of four months. I got, I had to get the, this thing in stages because they were out of stock on certain items at different times. So I ended up getting the electronics first, the main body pieces second, and then the emitters um, last. And the emitters just came in today, so I was able, or emitter just came in today, and I was able to um, get this thing assembled and put together. This is their um, lightsaber carrying case. So here it is. I present first ever Saber Forge ASP that I've gotten, codenamed 
Ventus. Now, for the meaning behind the name, the word Ventus is the Latin word for wind. And I had a ridiculously hard time trying to find a name for this hilt because the two themes of the hilt that I would had in mind were air slash wind and speed. So I was tossing around different names, trying to get, trying to come up with a name for this thing, like Wayward Wind, Sonic Wind, Mach Wind, Blue Tornado, etc. But the word Ventus kept sticking in my head. And, but the fun fact is, in the original Latin, the word Ventus is, the V is pronounced as a W. So in the original Latin, it would be pronounced Ventus. But I kept it as Ventus for a number of reasons. For one thing, every single Romantic language, that's every language that came from Latin, uh, it, it keeps the v, the v as a V sound or even a B sound. The other thing is for the sake of simplicity. Kind of like how the proper pronunciation for Hawaii is Hawaii. But nobody ever says that anymore unless they are deliberately speaking the native Hawaiian language. Plus, there is a character in the Kingdom Hearts universe by the same name and same pronunciation. So, I figured because of all those things, I just keep it as Ventus. But anyway, the pieces that I use for this thing, and this is absolutely beautiful, by the way. The pieces that I use, in case you couldn't already see, was the um, emitter of the Rebel. There are timing shims in between the uh, emitter and switch section, so I could get this thing to line up perfectly. I use the switch section of the Fallen, ASP body number two here, and the pommel of the Katana. Now what I did was, in place of a blade retention screw, I swapped it out with a uh, knurled thumb screw from the Custom Saber Shop, so that way it's much easier to change the blade. And the other thing I like about this look too is that it looks like a um, blade height adjuster that you would see on a, a, a dual phase lightsaber. So anyways, um, all the pieces, now the, the, I got this design, this I this design particularly popped into my head because especially, I thought to myself, okay, and this is especially after I got my katana, I thought to myself, what would a cross between a Graflex and a katana look like? And then I saw Star Wars Rebels a few months ago and or a few snippets of it anyway, and I saw Kane and Jarrus's lightsaber. I'm like, ah, man, they beat me to it. But then I saw, noticed his lower grip and noticed how it didn't match the graphics. So I said, okay, maybe there's a chance. So that's where I got that idea to design it. The other thing is, this is the Japanese coming out of me. I wanted everything to be symmetrical. For me personally, I don't like any recessions that'll get in the way of gripping a lightsaber hilt. And the only choke point, in my opinion, should be where you're doing a lot of spinning or need a lot of flexibility. And that, for me, is right here. Right by where the Suba is and where I'm going to be grabbing this thing. So everything is sleek. It's symmetrical, just how I wanted it to be. And it's just a phenomenal job. Great job, Phil Isherwood and the rest of the Saber Forge crew. Thank you very much. So the dimensions of this hilt, I am going to just set this down. The dimensions from the tip of the emitter shroud to the base of the pommel looks to be almost, it's like third, just under 14 inches, about maybe, hey, hang on, 13 and 7 eighths, 13 and 7 eighths inches long from the tip of the shroud to the tip of the pommel. Now, uh, the width, all the pieces here, the width except for this choke point, is exactly one and a half inches wide. Oi. Sorry. Sorry. Yep, one and a half inches wide. Yep, that's right. Now this net the narrowest point on the saber, which is right here, the choke point, is like one and a quarter inches, looks like, just under one and a half. No. Oh, no, 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 sorry. One and three eighths inches. The choke point is one and three eighths in inches wide in diameter. Um, the suba, this suba from this end to this end is two and a half inches, or not two and a half, I think it's two inches. Nope, oh, two and a half inches wide. Suba is two and a half inches wide. Uh, the, in the blade tube here 
is two and a half inches wide as well. And the, and the area that you can actually grip, that's from the base of the suba, wait, right here, all the way down to the tip of the pommel, the grippable area of this thing measures exactly 10 inches long. So I designed this also to be both be used as both a one-handed hilt or a two-handed hilt in case the need arises. That was the other purpose of this thing. So the blade socket depth I think is about three and a half inches so I'm going to be losing three and a half inches of blade length when I stick the um, blade in. But that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and I bought two 40 inch long blades from the custom saber shop to make up that difference and for screen accuracy because in the Star Wars universe um, the area the length of an exposed lightsaber blade is about 36 37 inches in length and that's the exposed blade now saber forge does make 36 37 inch blades but most of the time, the only time that is ever ends up being screen accurate is on a thin neck or on a hilt where the um, LED module is pressed up with an inch sink. So that's why I went ahead and I bought the uh, Custom Saber Shop uh, Trans White Battle Blades. This is the uh, show blade actually, which is a sixteenth of an inch thick. And this is the battle blade, which is an eighth of an inch thick. It's the same thickness as the uh, Saber Forge uh, V4 Infinity Edge Blades. So when I do the blade color in the dark, I'm going to be showing those off as well. I'm going to be doing it the three different ones. Now, um, the electronics, I are these are, this is a Hero Tier electronics system. And I got this, so the only reason I got this is so I could customize the sound font. Because the theme of this hilt is air and wind slash sp and speed, um, I en ended up purchasing a sound font that custom created by Shamim on YouTube and the name of the sound font is called Wind. I also managed to create my own LED module as well and what I did was the LED, this is a 12 watt plus LED and I'm it's a custom color of mine and I'm calling it Air Blue. That's three regular blues and one white. It's essentially the reverse of Frost White. So, aluminum knurled aluminum kill key as well. I'm going to pull this out. Yeah, this is loud. Funny thing is, it sounds louder inside the hilt than outside with the electronics anyway. But here's, it. here's the sample of the wind sound font and the 12 watt plus air blue. Sorry for blinding you. Katana's pommel right here. This thing looks really nice. Basic swing. Dual brass um, tactile switches. This is the ignition and this is the auxiliary port. This is for your blaster blocks and lockup. Those are your blaster blocks, lockup. Course, the power down. Now, the flash on clash is a I I made so that it's a um, it's one white and one blue. I'm calling that silver. Uh, it has a real silvery appearance. So, anyways, I'm gonna stick a blade in here. This is the standard V4 Infinity Edge blade that Saber Forge has to offer. And because I have this knurled knob, it's much easier to change in and out. So I'm going to fire this thing back up again. 12 watt plus air blue wind sound font. Woohoo! Now this is bright. It seems to be diffusing pretty evenly all the way to the tip. I'm not seeing any dull spots whatsoever, but then again, this is only 34 or less, actually 33 and a half inches of exposed blade, so it's kind of short for a lightsaber. But still, I'm not seeing any dull spots in this thing at all. So, see, swings it, swings. Flash on flash, silver again. Blaster block. A 
Lock up. And power down. Now, to describe this color is like the color of the sky. That's one of the reasons where I got this name. It looks like an actual sky blue, not an enhanced, enriched sky blue like if you put on a pair of dark glasses. No, this actually looks like the color of the sky, and that's exactly what I was intending this thing to be. So here's your power down. And that was for the V4 Infinity Edge Blade, 37 inches long that Saber Forge has. I'm gonna sh this is the uh, middle weight of the three blades that I just have. This is their, um, uh, their the Custom Saber Shop's show blade. It's a 16th of an inch thick. It's thinner than the Saber Forge V4, but the light diffusion is better overall, but it's not as bright. This is a trans white blade. But the thing is, if you put any diffusion film inside this thing, it'll actually make it look paler, and I found that out by accident. So, but this thing is much lighter to swing around. I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. So again, flash and clash. Blaster block. Lock up. And power down. Okay, one last go of this before I call it quits. This is the Custom Saber Shop's Battle Blade, trans white. It's an eighth of an inch thick, same as the V4s. Light diffusion is about the same, although it is a bit dimmer than the other one, but this one is about from here to here, it's almost 36, 37 inches. So this is a screen accurate lightsaber blade, just like the uh, show blade is. So this one is actually meant for dueling, and this is the heaviest of the three blades that I have so far. So, flash and clash. Blaster block. Lock up. Power down. That is the 12 watt plus custom air blue color, wind sound font by Shami. Okay, that being said and done, that is it for my review of my ASP Saber Forge Ventus. I hope this answers any and all questions you may have. If not, please feel free to shoot me a comment below and I will answer them as soon as possible. Also, I wanted to thank everybody for making this a good season one of my Saber Forge reviews. I didn't expect them to get as popular as they have been, but they've gotten gained a lot of ground. And I'm not somebody who usually cares too much about stuff like that. I am 25 after all, but it was kind of a pleasant surprise. It was also equally fun to see my friend's jaws hit the floor when they saw how much views I had. <laughs> So that was, you know, it was, a, it was a nice touch. So for all of you guys who have been supportive and who have kept me going on these, thank you very much. I wanted to give a big shout out to uh, the Guardians of the Force for introducing me to Saber Forge, especially with the Katana, which is the first hilt that I bought from them. Uh, my good friend Jordan Leong for um, getting me hooked on Saber Forge when he bought his Acolytes and we started dueling with them. Uh, another shout out to City of Sabers uh, for introducing me to the 12 watt color options, 12 watt plus color options, sorry. And one final and last but certainly not least shout out to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Shamim, for creating the uh, custom wind sound font that I was able to use on my hilt. So they're not endorsing me or paying me to say this, I'm doing it out of my own free will because, like I said, I'm somebody who gets credit worth too. But, anyways, thank you everybody again. I. Uh, Again, I hope this answers any and all questions you may have, and I hope to get back to these as soon as possible. There will be, if I am able to do one more hill review, that's going to be the bonus episode, and I will be doing a Blade Color in the Dark video with all three of the blades that I just demonstrated with, uh, the 12 watt plus Air Blue, and that will be going up you know, as soon as possible. So everybody, take care of yourselves, have a great day or evening, depending on what time zone you're in. And hopefully I'll see you within the next couple of years or sooner. Uh, be safe. Shoots dead. Good night, everybody.